there, it's Florence here and today I'm back with another episode of my knitting video podcast. It's been quite a long time since my last episode and there are sort of two reasons why it's been a bit delayed. Firstly, I've been so sick. I've taken time off from my work and everything to relax for Christmas and I got sick and then as soon as I started recovering I got sick again. So I've basically spent most of December really ill, um, I'm still, you know, I have a cold. I'll try and not make that annoying for you guys watching this. Secondly, I filmed this whole video, then I realised that my hair was brushing against my microphone for the whole video, and so I'm back like a week later to refilm it. This video is basically for me to show you all of the Christmas gifts that I knitted for people, so luckily I've been able to borrow back all of my Christmas gifts so that I can show them in this video, hopefully this time keeping my hair well away from the microphone. I know the microphone is an improvement, but I'm still getting used to it, so it's a little tricky at times. As usual, I'm going to start this video by talking a little tiny bit about what I'm wearing. I don't know if I've worn this jumper on this channel before, it's not new. Um, as you can probably tell, I'm back in my parents' house. That means that I can go and look at all of the jumpers that I didn't take with me when I moved to Oxford. And this is one of them. This is actually one of the first jumpers I ever knitted. Um, I really haven't been knitting for that long. This is the sweater number 9 by My Favourite Things Knitwear. It's honestly not that bad, it's a little bit more cropped than I'd like. The sleeves, like the cuffs here and the bottom of the body have no stretch to them at all because I hadn't learned about which bind offs are good to use at the point where I knitted this. And it was also totally knitted on a student budget, so this is knitted in, I want to say Drops Alaska with Drops Silk Mohair held together, which honestly worked pretty well. It's a lot denser than the actual suggested yarn for this pattern, which um, I believe is the knitting for all of Heavy Merino held with silk mohair. I did knit this jumper again later in that yarn combination, but honestly this is still good. And if you are looking for a really simple jumper to start off with, I mean obviously I would recommend my own pattern, but if that one doesn't appeal to you, this one is also really, really great for beginners and has that really good budget yarn combination. Actually, you don't even have to use the silk mohair. If you're on even more of a budget, this jumper can be knitted in just one strand of Drops Alaska and it's like a 20 pound jumper or something. I don't know. But yes, there won't be further details of this one on my Ravelry because I knitted this long before I ever started using Ravelry. Okay, so uh, that's enough chatting about this jumper. I guess I'll move on to talk about more recent knits, specifically all the things that I made people for Christmas. And as usual, I guess I'll start with the biggest piece. So I only knitted one full-size garment as a Christmas gift this year, and this is a gift that I made for my boyfriend. I've showed this sort of in a half-complete state in a few previous episodes, but here it is, finally finished. This is the Zipper Sweater Light Man. So it's the zipper sweater, but it's the DK weight version. The original zipper sweater is more of an iron weight on I think 5.5 millimeter needles. This is knitted on four millimeter needles. And it's also the men's version. I'm really not sure how much difference there is between the men and women's versions of the patterns. I don't really see the point in buying both. Like if I was to knit this again for myself, which I honestly might, I'd probably just use the men's pattern again. But I like buying the men's patterns because I feel pretty confident adjusting jumpers to fit my preferences in terms of sort of sleeve length, body length, that sort of thing. And I'm good at estimating the yarn quantities required to do that. Whereas I am very unfamiliar with knitting stuff for men, so I quite like the pattern to hold my hand and give me exact measurements for body length or whatever so that I can get them just right. So this is my second time knitting a petite knit zipper sweater. I did originally knit for my boyfriend the original Aran Waite zipper sweater two winters ago, maybe? Quite a long time ago. That one was knitted in Vilkalana Peruvian Highland wool and Drops Brush Alpaca Silk. And honestly, I really like it and I think it looks really good on him. However, he says he doesn't wear it as much as he'd like to because it is really thick and really chunky. And even in the winter in the UK, it's not often cold enough to wear a jumper like that. Uh, I'm speaking from experience because it has sort of a similar yarn combination and I'm feeling very warm right now, even right at the end of December. So when Petite Knit released the pattern for the Zipper Sweater Light and Zipper Sweater Light Man, um, he asked if I would make him one for Christmas and I did exactly that. Okay, so I'll start off with showing the yarn that I used. 
in I think it was the last episode I did ask if you guys would like me to speak a little bit more in these videos about how much my yarn cost and sort of come up with a, a cost for each project if that's interesting to you or if it's too you know UK specific or whatever but I think people fairly overwhelmingly were in favor of me including this in my episodes so I'll show you the yarn that I used this is BC Garn Loch Lomond this is a 100% wool yarn I'd say it's a lighter DK weight, although it does say on the packaging that you can knit it to an 18 stitch gauge. That feels a bit unlikely to me, but maybe. 150 meters for 50 grams, so it is quite a lot of yardage for a DK, uh, I guess because it is so light. It has a nice sort of dry texture and a slightly tweedy look, I really like it. I did knit up a swatch in just this yarn for this jumper, um, and I know somebody who did make, I think actually two of the, these jumpers using only the Lot Lomond. So that is possible if you're on a budget or if you don't want your jumper to be super dense. But I personally wanted my swatch to be a little bit thicker. And so I did go out to my local yarn shop and pick up a few of these. This is Izia Alpaca One. It's a lace weight 100% alpaca, really designed to be held with something else. Um, these are 50 grams and 400 meters each. So it's a great budget alternative to mohair because it's kind of a similar price, I think even slightly cheaper, but it has like twice the yardage per ball. Also, my boyfriend is not a fan of mohair. He finds he's a little bit sensitive to it. And so this is a yarn that he really likes. He was able to touch some of my jumpers that are made out of a similar yarn combination. And he really liked them. So I ended up going for this and he picked the color as well. In terms of colors, this one is number six. I think it's called Silver. I bought it from My Ivory Room, which is a yarn shop that I'll talk a lot more about later in this episode. I talk about quite frequently. It's one of my favorites. And then I guess this one is from my other favorite yarn shop, which is the Oxford Yarn Store. It's my local yarn shop or one of two local yarn shops that I really like when I'm at home in Oxford. Um, both of them are really great. In terms of prices, I'm going to, I think, break down the cost two ways. Firstly, when you're buying yarn for a project, uh, at least if you're like me and you don't like playing yarn chicken, you may find that you buy a little more yarn than you need. So I'm going to calculate both uh, the actual amount that I spent on the yarn, including any over-purchased yarn. You can probably tell from the fact I have a couple here that I haven't broken into yet that I did have some left over. But then I'll also calculate exactly how much this jumper would cost if you were to use the exact amount. Although I won't do partial balls, I'll just do like the exact amount of full balls of yarn that you need. So I hid this in the size medium. However, I did make a couple of small changes. Firstly, I cast on two fewer stitches in each underarm than it was specified for the size medium. So I guess the body has four fewer stitches and each sleeve has two fewer stitches. This is obviously a really small change in size, but I just wanted to size it down slightly from the medium because that was going to be slightly bigger than my boyfriend's requested jumper size. By the way, the way I figured that out was um, I got him to measure a couple of jumpers that he wears really frequently. Um, and then he told me how big they were measured across the chest when they were lying flat. And then I could base the size that I was going to make of this jumper on that. Also, um, I knitted the body, I think, pretty much to the length specified in the pattern. But for the sleeves, when I was knitting them, he was visiting actually. So he was able to try it on and I could base them off his preferred length. My boyfriend is a little bit on the shorter side. I think he's about five foot six or five foot seven. I don't know his height in regular units, so my apologies for that. I really do try and break away from the imperial measurement system as much as possible, but for some reason, when other people tell me their heights, they only tell me in feet and inches, so that's what I've got. And so if you are knitting the same size, you may end up using a little bit more yarn if you're knitting it for someone slightly taller who has longer arms. With that being said, I used 1,200 meters of yarn to knit this. That means I used uh, pretty much exactly three of these and eight of these. Therefore, if I bought exactly the amount of yarn I ended up using, well, it depends because I got the Loch Lomond on sale. So accounting for that, it would cost me 72 pounds. However, I actually bought the amount specified in the pattern, which meant that I spent 92 pounds. It's funny because I consider this to be a pretty budget-friendly yarn combination. It doesn't have mohair or anything particularly expensive going on. But just because it's a man-sized jumper, it uses a lot more yarn than I'm expecting. Even 70 pounds feels like quite a lot. However, I am really, really happy with this yarn combination. I think it's amazing. I really strongly recommend it to anyone who's looking for a really nice mohair-free DK weight combination. 
it feels super soft and it looks really beautiful too. I don't know if you can see, it's like ever so slightly tweedy, really, really pretty and it feels great. I'll try and give you a slightly better view of the jumper. Uh, I'm connected to my camera by a microphone cable that is slightly too short, so it's a little bit inconvenient, but here you go. You can see it has a very simple raglan construction, and I've put this zip into the front. The pattern has a folded collar, so the zip goes in between the folded layers, which gives a really neat finish. And then you'll have to forgive me, um, there is a facing that's knitted to hide the, I don't know what it's called, the fabric part of the zip all the way down but I've actually only sewed it in on one side so far, so this facing still lifts up. I will sew that outer edge of the facing down before I give this to my boyfriend. We didn't spend Christmas together, but I'm going to see him for New Year, so I have a little extra time to finish this off. I'm still totally counting it as a finished object because that's the only thing I still have to do. You can see the size, and I do think that the zip still looks a little bit messy where it's sewed on like around the bottom. I'm hoping that sewing down the outside of the facing will uh, neaten that up a tiny bit. Oh, the zip I used, by the way, is the Petite Knit one that Petite Knit sells on her website. Obviously, you don't have to buy a Petite Knit zip, but I really like this one. I like how the zip pull looks. And I actually didn't buy this one from her website. My other local yarn shop in Oxford sells the Petite Knit branded zips. They come with like a free Petite Knit label to sew into your clothes. I hate clothes labels, they make me feel really uncomfortable, so I will never use it. Um, but the zip is really nice, and I'm always kind of surprised by how expensive zips are. They're often plastic or uh, like coloured, and I don't want that. I like the big chunky metal zip. And so I always end up buying jean zips, and I'm always surprised they cost almost as much as this one anyway, so I did just go ahead and buy the one that Petite Nate used for the sample pictures for this pattern. Overall, I'm super happy with this jumper. I love the yarn. Um, I haven't put the finished thing on my boyfriend yet, so I don't know how it will fit him, but I'm optimistic that it will look really nice. The pattern is great. I really do recommend it, particularly if there's someone in your life who you'd like to knit for, but who isn't someone who particularly gravitates towards traditional looking jumpers. This has a little bit more of a quarter zip vibe, which they might find a little bit more comfortable to wear. At least that's how it is for my boyfriend. I'm working on getting him into a nice capable jumper, but we're not there yet. Yeah, that's, I think, everything I have to say about this, which is good, because I think I said a lot about this. Let's move on to gift knit number two. Sorry about the sun. Uh, I'm sure that's super distracting. This is like the first time I've seen the sun in months, to be honest. I knitted for my mum a pair of mittens. This was also a requested gift. I asked her what she wanted for Christmas, and I think I mentioned in a previous episode, my mum's really into swimming in the sea, particularly in the winter. Like, she'll drive over to a beach a little bit from my house, and she will go swimming with a bunch of friends in the sea, and then they'll have hot drinks or whatever afterwards. And she always wears a dry robe, but she wanted uh, something warm to put on her hands as well, and so she asked me for a pair of mittens. I've knitted her fingerless gloves in the past, which which I will actually show later in this episode as well, but this time she wanted full-on mittens. I don't remember if she asked for colour work or if I just opted to do colour work mittens. I always see those sorts of Norwegian Salbu mittens and I think they're really beautiful, and I've always been really curious about knitting a pair, so I went ahead and did it, and this is the result. These are much easier to show than the, the jumper. Here is the backside, it has these really lovely flowers on. I like how they have a sort of softer and rounder shape, than the pointy motifs you usually see on these sorts of Selby mittens. And then I'll show you the other side. You can see they have like flowers on the thumbs as well. And then I think it's kind of traditional to have this sort of smaller motif repeated over the inside of the gloves. These I am so happy with. I both really enjoyed the process of knitting these mittens. I really liked the yarn that I used and I'm so happy with the finished result as well, so these are really just great all around. Where should I start? The pattern for these is by Skeindir Knits. I think this pattern is called Marit, um, although Skeindir Knits has a huge number of patterns for these sorts of Selby mittens, all with slightly different motifs on them and all knitted at different gauges. There are some pretty chunky ones that you could probably knit up in like an afternoon. There are some much finer gauge ones that are fingering weight and would take much longer. Um, I went for a happy medium here. This is a DK weight version. 
I wanted to make a pretty detailed looking mitten with a complicated floral motif and there are a lot more options for interesting designs like that when there are more stitches on the mitten. But I also was knitting them, you know, a bit of a time crunch for Christmas. I didn't want to stress myself out too much, so I went with DK. And also, because I have very large hands, I think my mum has pretty large hands as well, I don't generally get along very well with one-size-fits-all women's gloves. Like, I just can't do that. And so, these are actually knitted in an Aran weight yarn. I say Aran weight yarn, uh, it's called Wool Local Aran by Erica Knight, but I would say it's really a worsted weight very similar to something like the Filcolana Previan Highland Wool or the Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino. Uh, it's definitely thicker than a DK, but I don't know if I'd call it an Aran. I bought this yarn specifically because my mum is really interested in, you know, doing things that are good for the environment. She tries to buy food with low air miles. And so I thought it would be nice to pick out some British yarn for these gloves as well. So I think this yarn is a mixture of Blueface Leicester and Masham. It's from Yorkshire and the packaging says that the yarn is sourced and dyed and spun all within 50 miles in Yorkshire, which is really cool. In terms of budget, these were a pretty expensive project, at least for their size. I had to buy two full 100 gram skeins just because, you know, I'm doing a colour work glove, so I need two colours. And they cost, I believe, £17.50 each from uh, the Woolhound in the Oxford Covered Market. It's a really lovely yarn shop. This yarn is my favourite thing there. I go back to it every time because it's so beautiful and uh, this was a really great opportunity to try it out. I always find that small projects like this make for a really good chance to try yarn that would be too expensive to buy to knit a full jumper in. And so uh, I enjoyed working with it a lot. The pattern was pretty clear. I don't really have any criticism about it at all. Uh, it's all charted, which I really enjoy. They didn't take as long as I thought, I'd say they're pretty quick. And I did use the same needle size as suggested for the DK weight yarn, even though my yarn was slightly thicker. So I guess these make a slightly denser mitten, which is probably a good thing. I am an English knitter, um, like in terms of what hand I hold my yarn in. I am also an English knitter, uh, but that kind of makes colour work tricky for me. I do knit two-handed colour work, but I'm not a particularly confident continental style knitter, and so I have a little bit of trouble keeping the tension even between my two hands. So I really thought that these were going to be much more frustrating and have a much worse finished result than they actually have. I think they look really good. I mean, I'm sure some of you guys are much more proficient colour work knitters than me and look at these and think that they don't look so great, but I think that to the average untrained eye, you're probably not going to look at these and think they're knitted by somebody who kind of sucks at colour work, so I'm really proud of them in that sense. And I showed in the last episode I did go out and buy a couple of balls of fingering weight merino from Knitting for Olive to make myself some more of these gloves at a fingering weight gauge, uh, or maybe another pair for my mum, since I don't have that time pressure anymore. I'll see if I can put one on my hand, maybe the hand that doesn't have an Apple Watch on. They fit pretty well, so that's the end of my finger. I don't think I would want them any smaller, but they look so cute, do they not? I think they're beautiful. I'm so excited to cast on some more, and yeah, maybe I won't have them done for this winter, but next winter perhaps. That's, I think, everything I have to say about these. So these are the Marit Gloves by Skander Knits, knitted for my mum, and I'll move on to my next and I think final gift net. So I was knitting something for my mum, and I felt like I should probably also knit something for my dad. I watch a lot of knitting podcasts, and people always talk about uh, someone being knit-worthy, which I think means they're good at caring for wool stuff, and they're very appreciative of the time and effort that's been put into knitting them a gift. And my dad is probably the most knit-worthy person I know. He really loves wool jumpers and accessories. I asked my mum what kind of thing he might want, and she said I should knit him some socks. And so I did knit him a pair of socks. The craziest thing is, this is my first ever completed pair of vanilla socks. I have got probably 20 to 30 pairs of socks that I've knitted for myself. All of them are either cables or lace, or rib, I guess, or just something more complicated going on than just plain vanilla. And so I wanted to choose a yarn that was a little bit more fun so that I wasn't going to get bored knitting such a plain sock. I'm going to have to consult my phone for prices and also for the exact colour codes and stuff. Okay, so the main colour, which is this really fun variegated blue, green, purple, grey 
yarn is the Shopovola Crazy Zauber Ball 4 ply. It's the standard sock yarn one with nylon in it. And uh, yeah, it's self striping or variegated. I don't know what you call this. Like, I guess self striping, but the colors fade together. And it also is mild. I don't know if you can see, but these sections here, the two plies are very different in color. So you get this cool mild look. I know nothing about spinning. So if I sound clueless, it's because I am. Um, so this is the color Phone Lager or 2427. This cost £14.50 from Moore Warehouse. Uh, I think it's cheaper in my local yarn shop, but I wanted this specific color. And then I used a contrast for the toes and heels. Basically, I was doing a heel flap. This is just a standard slip stitch heel flap, which is always a tongue twister. It's my favorite heel construction for socks. And I didn't want to disrupt the patterning um, or like the width of the stripes by knitting the heel flap in the same yarn. I know I could probably do an afterthought heel or something, but I like this heel construction, so I ended up choosing a contrast colour. So this is knitted just in Drops Fable, cheapest sock yarn there is. Um, so this is in the colour Light Grey or 115, and it cost me £2.30. So that gives a total cost of what, about £17 to knit this pair of socks? And I have quite a bit of yarn left over. Um, I wasn't really close to running out of the main color or anything like that, even for a pair of man-sized socks. I did a little bit sort of crowdsource how to make these socks. Because I've never knitted a pair of socks for anyone other than myself, that's just a lie, I did once knit my sister a pair of petite knit Sunday socks many years ago. But, you know, this is the first time in recent times that I've knitted a pair of socks for someone else, and it's the first time I've knitted a man-sized pair of socks. I did ask how long to knit the cuff and the leg, because I always underestimate how long the cuff and leg should be on my own socks. Uh, I closed the blinds, so if the lighting changed, that's why. It's still super bright. Anyway, I asked uh, how many rows people do for the cuff and for the leg for man socks, and I sort of averaged roughly uh, all the different values that I was given. And so I ended up doing 15 rows of half twisted rib for the cuff, then another 60 rows for the leg before starting the heel flap. All of this is on 2.25 millimeter needles, which I think is the right choice. The crazy Zauber ball is definitely on the thinner side for a silk yarn, so I think it knits up best on 2.25 millimeter needles. It is noticeably thinner than the fable that I used for the heels and toes. Oh, and the whole sock is 72 stitches around, um, which I don't know if it was the right choice or not. I was a little worried it might be too big. I can wear 72 stitch socks myself though, so maybe it will be okay. It's the stitch count I normally use if I'm making like very ribbed socks or socks with a lot of cables, which don't have as much stretch to them. So I don't know how it will be in stock at. See, I just have that cable sock experience, but not that vanilla sock experience, and so I don't know how it'll go. Um, they look really pretty though. Some other stuff relating to knitting socks that are not my size. Uh, firstly, figuring out what length to knit them. I basically looked up like a shoe size chart and saw the difference in centimeters between my shoe size and my dad's shoe size. So then I could knit the socks to the length I normally knit them to for myself before starting the toe and then just sort of put a marker and knit for that many centimeters before starting the toe um, and they are about the length that I need that way. In terms of blocking, I have a cardboard sock blocker that I used for like a year before I finally bought myself a real sock blocker. And so I basically just cut an extension out of cardboard for that. It's cardboard wrapped in cling film, so it doesn't get soggy when I put a damp sock on it. But I took the cling film off, taped on like a three centimeter extension to the toe, cling filmed it back up again. It's quite a skinny sock blocker, but I like that because it doesn't stretch the socks out too much when I block them, but it still leaves them looking sort of giftable and pretty. So yeah, that's the socks. Everything else is kind of done as usual. So I didn't follow a pattern, they're cuffed down, Long tail cast on, I never do anything else. It works just fine. Uh, heel flap and gusset, wedge toe, basic vanilla socks. Okay, so those should be all of my finished objects, I think. I do have a couple of work in progress pieces to show you. And then I also have some new yarn um, and swatches for things that I'm about to start. I will start off by showing this, which I think was a work in progress in the last video. And you'll probably notice that I haven't really made a lot of progress on it. This is the Waffle Loop Sweater by Other Loops. This is the back panel, so this is the back of the neck, and then I've increased uh, every row for the shoulders. And this is a really interesting design because it's a cable jumper, but the cables are all in sort of a rectangular panel on the front and on the back. 
The rest of the fabric is this simple waffle stitch, I think it's called, which is really cute. And you can see at the bottom here, I've just started that cabled panel. I think in the last episode, I just had like a little strip of fabric. Um, and I have got a bit further, but this has mostly been on hold while I work on Christmas gift knits. I'll talk briefly about it since I haven't made much progress. Um, the yarn is sponsored for this jumper. This was gifted by Valentina, who has the yarn shop My Ivory Room. I went there a few weeks ago and picked out some yarn and she gifted it to me um, rather than making me pay for it, which was very kind. This is yarn from Gepard. This is Piralana, which is 50% wool and 50% alpaca DK. And then this is the Gepard Kid Setter, which is a really standard silk mohair. I think it's pretty nice. It's very comparable to something like the Knitting for Olive silk mohair, in my opinion. Maybe not as soft as Izzia, but really soft. I chose these because I really loved the colour, which doesn't generally show up very well on camera, but maybe the lighting is making it a little better than usual this time. It's um, not really grey, it's definitely a purple, like it's the greyest purple ever, or like the purpliest grey ever. It's a super unique colour, I don't have anything else like it, and the wool and mohair match really nicely. So the colour is number 106 for the wool, and 104 for the mohair. All colour numbers and names and the yarn types and the patterns and designers, everything will be in the description, you can always check it there. But yeah, this is really, really pretty and I'm a big fan of this yarn. It has definitely got a lot more structure than alpaca would because it's 50% wool, but it still has that alpaca -y softness. I'm sometimes irritated by alpaca, but I haven't noticed any issues with this one so far. Obviously I haven't worn the jumper a bunch yet or anything, but I have high hopes. It kind of feels like what I wish alpaca yarn was. Like, I do feel like the blend is an improvement over pure alpaca. So yeah, I'm not going to talk any more about that jumper since I haven't made a lot of progress on it, um, but I do really like how it's coming along, and hopefully at some point I'll have it finished, although I do have a couple of other projects I need to be working on which have deadlines coming up, so my focus may be on those. I will quickly show you another work in progress. This one again is... Uh, very small, like there is almost nothing here. This is a work in progress on the mountain walk gloves. So I did mention before that in previous years I have made my mum like fingerless gloves, which is why she wanted mittens this year. This is the pair of fingerless gloves that I made her, I think last year. Again, I'll see if I can put one on to show you. These are the mountain walk gloves. They are a faux cable fingerless glove, so they look very similar to the mountain walk socks that I have a pattern for and that I'm actually wearing today as well. Um, they have this cable pattern on them, but they're not real cables, they're all faux cables, which I enjoy because they're much quicker to knit, you don't lose your flow as much as if you have to drop stitches to cable. And so I knitted these gloves for her last Christmas, and this uses Cardiff Cashmere Classic, which is, well, it's a DK weight, but I would say it's more sport weight. This is the colour, I never know how to pronounce it, Mose or Mose, it's spelt M-O-S-E anyway. It's a really pretty uh, green colour, and she has worn these I think quite a bit. This is the single thing that I've sort of designed that I get the most messages about. People constantly message me to ask me when I'm going to be releasing a pattern for these. Um, by the time I got round to it last winter it was like basically spring and so I never bothered, and now there's a risk of that happening again this year. So, I have uh, finally cast another one on. There is very little here. This is actually not Cardiff Cashmere Classic. This is Lang Cashmere Premium, which is a really similar yarn. Like, side by side, the two look pretty much indistinguishable. They're spun the same way, they have super similar yardages, and they're a very similar weight as well. Um, I don't know what this colour is, but I will put it in the description. It's a brown, it's very similar to the brown shade of Cardiff Cashmere Classic, I would say. I think that one's just called brown. Knitting it on 3mm needles, um, I've just started, but I think it will be a pretty quick knit. So yeah, I expect there will be a call for testers uh, for that, coming hopefully in a couple of weeks, and then uh, that test knit will run for two or three weeks, and I'll hopefully release the pattern after that, so still within the winter. So if you want to knit them, I promise the pattern will be coming soon this time. Okay, so those are my sort of active work in progress pieces. I know I haven't got very much, but that's really because I've been finishing things off for Christmas, and so my needles are pretty clear right now. And so I'm going to talk about two other pieces that I am about to start working on, and I have like nice swatches to show for both of them as well. 
Okay. I have to hold these really still so that the bags don't rustle. Um, but I got some yarn for a test knit. This yarn is again sponsored, not because I have a YouTube or anything. It's a test knit, so all of the testers get a free pattern, which was gifted by the designer. This is going to be a jumper by Ullen Knitwear, who I have test knitted for a couple of times before. And then the yarn is sponsored by Izia. Something that I quite like about Ullen Knitwear's test knits is that uh, Izia are very flexible about what yarn you want to use. So I am test knitting this jumper that's called the Season Sweater. Um, it's all over cables. It's a little bit similar to maybe sweater number 15 by My Favourite Things Knitwear. We don't talk about that one on this channel. These cables are a little bit more interesting though. They're not just sort of three stitches and three stitches crossed over. You actually have a single stitch that travels uh, uninterrupted up the middle and then two stitches keep going each way. That's a terrible description, but I do have a swatch here I can show you. You can see these cables are a little bit more unusual and maybe more interesting. And uh, unlike sweater number 15, where all of the cabling happens on the same row, they're sort of staggered. So like there's a cable here and here on these ones, but these ones are a little lower and a little higher. That's a terrible description, but you see what I mean? The cables are staggered. Anyway, I think it's really beautiful. And the original jumper is knitted in Tfinny from Izia and two strands of silk mohair. So it's super light and fluffy. It's knitted on really big needles. I think 5.5 millimeter needles. And that sounds really fun. However, <laughs> I do like a slightly more practical jumper. I wanted something that felt a little bit more classic and a bit more dense. And so instead of doing Tvinny with two strands of silk mohair, I went for Jensen with just one strand of silk mohair. Now, the colors don't match. This is on purpose. I was having a look on Ravelry uh, at Jensen and silk mohair combinations that people have used, and this one was really popular. I think Petit Knit might have used it for something, maybe a novice sweater or something like that. Uh, this specific combination just, um, yeah, I see people use it all the time. So this color is zero, it's the plain cream Jensen. And then this one is six, which is a really lovely beige silk mohair. I feel like the plain cream can look quite high maintenance. Um, and so adding a little beige just makes it a bit less intimidating to wear. Also, it gives a little tiny bit of a mild look that I think is very pretty. Um, so here it is on my swatch. I did have to size my needles down quite a bit because the yarn combination I'm using is so different to the recommended one, the Tavini and two strands of silk mohair. But it's totally possible to meet gauge with this combination for a more dense and sturdy feeling jumper. So yes, I'm super excited to knit this up. I have actually cast it on, but I don't have it with me right now. And this is, I guess, top priority in terms of projects I'm working on at the moment, just because it is a test knit and there is a deadline. It is a little bit hard to comment on the quality of the pattern for something like this. I am obviously a test knitter, so it's my job to find mistakes in the pattern, and therefore I'm not going to get mad if there are mistakes, like that's fine. I am also generally the quickest test knitter because I guess I make a small size and I knit a lot, so I'm generally the person who finds all of the mistakes. And so it's rare for a test knitting process to be super smooth for me. This one has been interrupted by some like errors in the pattern, which were really quickly fixed by the designer. It's not a very chatty test knit. Like I quite like these ones where we're really left to our own accord to knit the jumper. Um, and actually I really enjoy Ullen Knitwear's test knit setup. And that's really what mine are based off, where I have one group chat that's strictly info only, and then another group chat where you can talk to other testers about whatever if you want to. I really like how they're set up, and yeah, idea is shamelessly stolen from her. I think this is going to be really cute, I think I'm going to wear it a lot. And yeah, this yarn is one that I've been wanting to try for a really long time. This one is 100 grams, 250 meters, 100% pure new wool. I did look it up on the website, I think this wool is New Zealand wool. Some of the other colours come from Gotland wool, but this one is uh, fully white, so it's from New Zealand. And it's spun in Denmark. And this is, I would say, a very classic wool. If you're very sensitive to wool, this is probably not for you. It does definitely have a little bit of wool scratchiness to it. Not loads. Um, I wouldn't say it's a particularly scratchy wool, but it feels like wool, if you get what I'm saying. I find that this wool is a little bit expensive. And so it's really nice to be able to use it as part of a test knit where I'm not having to pay for it. I was actually sent a super generous amount of both of these. I was sent 700 grams of the Ensign and 
I think eight of the silk mohair, so I should have more than enough. And I'm hoping there might be a bit left over to do like a hat or some gloves or something at the end, because I really am enjoying this combination. It just feels like a really classic wool jumper combination that makes me really happy. Okay, moving on to the big boxes. Now I said that last one has a deadline because it is a test knit. This one has a deadline because it is a knit along. So um, I'm sure many of you have heard of the designer Anne Vensel. She's a really popular designer on Instagram. She I think is Danish and she was recently diagnosed with breast cancer. So a lot of people are knitting her most recent design, which is called, and I'm going to mispronounce it, Super Selene or Super Selena. I don't know. Pattern names will be in the description if you can't deal with my pronunciation. So Valentina messaged me and asked if I would like to participate in the knit along and she did end up gifting me the yarn to participate so this yarn is also gifted. It is very beautifully boxed with the pretty branded tissue paper although I will not show you the inside of the box because I have used this yarn so it's kind of a bit scrunched up. So I'll try and put a picture in here of what the jumper that the knit along is for looks like. As you can see, it is colour work, but it is a really chunky colour work jumper, so it shouldn't take too long to knit. I believe Gepard have given a couple of different yarn combinations that you can choose between. You can do it in Gepard Puno and Silk Mohair, or Woolia and Silk Mohair, or Puno alone. And I'm mostly going to be knitting this in Gepard Puno with Silk Mohair. So I'll show you the different colours. The original design is just two colours, so it's a main colour with one contrast colour. But I saw a swatch, I'll put a picture here, that Valentina knitted that, well this was the thing that really convinced me that I wanted to participate in this knit along. This swatch is so beautiful um, and I really liked having the different contrast colours and so I'm also going to be using three contrast colours for my version of this jumper. Here are the colours that I am using. Choosing these was kind of a pain. I find it really hard to pick colour work yarn online. And so Valentina was really helpful taking a lot of pictures of all the different balls of yarn side by side um, so that I could pick out colours that would work well together. But I will look up the numbers of the yarn that I got. So this is the main colour that I'm going to be using. It's somewhere between a brown and a grey. It's very pretty. This is colour 147 Wild Rabbit. The reason I went with this one is because I really liked in Valentina's swatch how the contrast colours were both lighter than the main colour and also darker than the main colour and so I wanted to be able to do something like that as well. So for my lightest contrast colour I have this one. This is 101 Natural White. And then for my much darker contrast colour I'm using this. Totally looks black on camera but this is 774 Navy Blue. It's a really saturated super dark blue colour, very pretty. And then I also got this one. This is 510 Dark Grey. And I like this because it's definitely got a bit less contrast when compared to the main colour, unlike these two other ones, which are much more high contrast. And so I feel like you really get different levels um, when you're using all of these colours together. That's a terrible explanation. I'm just not good at talking about colour work, colour selection. It's one of those things I wish I was better at. I wish I'd come up with more interesting, not so neutral colour work combinations, but I always rest on neutral colours when I'm struggling because I know they're always going to look good. Anyway, one of the features on this jumper is it has a big zigzag all the way around the yoke, which isn't my favourite feature. Um, I think sometimes they can look really heavy with this one big zigzag, just a matter of taste. But for my swatch, I use that slightly lower contrast grey for the zigzag and I love how this looks. So yeah, this swatch I knitted flat actually. I know you're supposed to swatch in the round if you're doing colour work um, because the tension can vary so much between knitting it flat and in the round. Also I do find knitting colour work flat to be pretty irritating. But to be honest I only have one ball each of these contrast colours and I'm a little bit worried about running out so I didn't want to do that thing which I normally do when I'm knitting a flat swatch in the round where I knit a row and then slide all of the knitting down to the other end of the needles and then knit a row again and you end up with those long loops of yarn from one side of the swatch to the other and then at the end I cut down those loops and spread them out so you have these sort of floppy tassels on each side of the swatch and I block it like that. But that obviously means you end up with a lot of little pieces of yarn so you can't unravel it to use the yarn for something else, like that yarn is really ruined. And so I did just knit this one flat so um, I can reclaim yarn as necessary. And I am really happy with this colour placement, so I think this is totally what I'm going to be going with. Oh 
Oh yeah, I totally forgot to mention, I'm using one other yarn as well. So I'm just using these colours of Puno alone for the colour work, but the main colour I am going to hold with Silk Mohair. This is a blow yarn, so I didn't actually give any yarn specs, that's my fault. 68% baby alpaca, 10% merino wool, and 22% PA for the net, so it's blown through a net. I will say you can't really feel the net, like I've had blow yarns before, I'm very conscious of the synthetic in them, but this, uh, you really can't see the net, it does just look like unspun baby alpaca. It is one of the nicer blow yarns I've seen. However, I am quite worried about wear on this. It's very, very soft, very, very fluffy, has a nice halo. I can just totally see it shedding and pilling a bunch. And so I did get some silk mohair to hold with it. This is also all gifted by Valentina. She picked the color out to match this. This is netting for olive silk mohair, which is always my favorite. Not quite as soft as the Izzia, but the color selection on this is great. And this one is called Morning Haze. It's a little bit paler, which I quite like, so it does give a little bit of a mild finish, but it has exactly the same greyish beige undertone, which matches really well. So yeah, I'm so happy with this swatch. I can't wait to cast this jumper on. I think this is definitely going to be an indoor-y sort of jumper, like it's so soft and lightweight and fluffy. It's that sort of cozy thing you want to throw on over your pajamas or whatever. The knit along, I believe, technically starts at the start of January, so I'm not gonna cast this on for a couple more days, see how far I can get with that cable test knit first. Um, and then I will get going on this. But yeah, I've been really enjoying this in color white lately, so this is right up my street, and I think it's going to be really amazing. So I was gifted the yarn for that knit along right before Christmas. I think I got the box of yarn like the day before Christmas Eve, or even on Christmas Eve. And I was only expecting that yarn, but Valentina actually sent me a second box of yarn as well as a sort of Christmas gift. And uh, this is super exciting, so I thought I would show you. So again, this is sponsored or gifted. Yeah, it was very beautifully boxed before I did rip it open. Um, this is some really special yarn. You know, the Florence who knitted this sweater number nine in Drops Alaska would not believe that she would ever get the opportunity to try something like this, but this is also from Gepard, and this is Gepard Eco Cashmere Vintage. I've been wanting to get some of this for so long. I was trying to justify buying like three or four of them to make a big, what's it called? The really popular petite knit scarf. Sophie Shawl, that one. But I was actually sent eight of these, which is crazy. This is a mix of new cashmere fibers and recycled unused 100% cashmere products from the Italian textile industry. I have color 506, which is this lovely mid gray color. And Valentina did include a little note with this yarn where she said that she picked out this color and this yarn for me because she thought that I might want to knit myself a matching zipper sweater to my boyfriend's zipper sweater. Since I did buy the yarn for the zipper sweater myself from her shop, she knew what I'd used. And so she pulled this one out because it looked kind of similar, but it's, you know, a little bit extra fancy. It's a treat. I haven't decided 100% what I'm going to do with this yet. She did say I could change the color. I really like this color, so I think I will keep it. I'm torn, I might do a zipper sweater because I really do want one, um, but I also will think about other patterns that might really suit it as well. It's really, really soft. It's actually structured very differently to the cashmere from Cardiff Cashmere or from Lang. This is a lot denser. It looks a lot more like traditional yarn, I guess, but it is still totally non-scratchy. It feels really great. The instructions for this yarn say that you're ideally supposed to steam it before you use it to make it extra soft. I don't have like a clothes steamer or anything, so I'd have to steam it in a saucepan, which is a lot of effort for a full sweater quantity. So I'm undecided on whether I'm going to steam it. If you've steamed this yarn before, um, you have to tell me, did it make a difference? Is it worth doing? It's just so pretty. I'm so excited to use it. So I'm gonna set that aside for after the test knit and the knit along are done. It'd be something to look forward to. That's mostly it in terms of new yarn. I mean, it's a lot of new yarn, but I was gifted it for test knits and knit alongs um, rather than it being yarn that I bought myself, really. I did buy something for myself, though. I was in Cambridge the other day with a friend from back when I was at school, actually, and we were going and shopping, and I went to Waterstones with her, and while she was looking at classic books, I don't really read a lot, I went to look at the knitting books, and I found the Knitting for Olive book in Waterstones. I've been going back and forth about whether I wanted to buy this one. I actually almost bought this when I was in Denmark last year, um, in Danish, <laughs> so I'm a little happy I waited, and it's now available in English, finally 
will make uh, following the patterns a little bit easier for sure. But this is a book of patterns by Knitting for Olive, the yarn brand, which I'm sure you've seen other people uh, showing and knitting from. They are super, super popular. There are some patterns in here that I'll be honest, I'm really not the biggest fan of. There are some patterns in here that I think are totally beautiful, and I've decided there are enough beautiful patterns for me to justify buying it. This one, I'll see if I can show you. This is the Barbara blouse. And you can see it is a long sleeve, high neck blouse in all over lace. This is, I think, knitted with one strand of the Knitting for Olive Merino. Yeah, one strand of Knitting for Olive Merino. Um, so it's a pretty affordable project. You only need four or five balls of Knitting for Olive Merino for the smaller sizes. But it would definitely take a long time, or I guess you could say it will keep you occupied for a long time. Good value for money. I really want to knit this. It has like a keyhole at the back of the neck. It is stunning. The pattern is so many pages, so I feel like it might be quite intimidating, but definitely on my list of sort of dream knits to do. I've been wanting to knit this one for so long. Is there anything else in here that I'm like super excited about? This one is the waffle sweater. I think this one's really popular online as well. You totally can't see. I think it's three strands of silk mohair and it's all over lace. Super beautiful and I have like a bunch of, I think like 10 balls of uh, Filcolan Atelier that I bought a very long time ago. I think I bought them for about five pounds or five pounds 50 per ball, which says how long ago it was because it doesn't cost that now. Um, in the green tea color, which I have been looking for the perfect pattern for for a really long time. And this might be it. I think it's really beautiful. I think there's a cardigan version available as well. This one's also really cute if you want something a little bit chunkier. So yeah, I think there are solid like three or four things in there that I'd like to knit. Will I ever get around to knitting all of them? Maybe not, but certainly that um, Barbara blouse, that has to be on my needles pretty soon. Maybe as a longer term project. And I'm really glad I was able to pick this up because I probably wouldn't have if I wasn't able to look at it in person and make up my mind. So yeah, I think that's everything for today. I hope you enjoyed this video despite all of the disruption and me being sick and the sunlight doing what it does. I will be back again soon with another episode. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.